But first, after last Tuesday's budget and last Thursday's budget reply from the opposition leader, for the first time in a number of years, there's actually a political contest between the major parties. Labor's for bigger government, higher taxes, the welfare state and ever more renewable power, whatever the cost. The coalition is for smaller government, lower taxes and putting reliable power ahead of cutting emissions. Not before time, I have to say. Of course, all last week, the government was trying to claim the Liberal Party's mantle of economic responsibility, citing the $4 billion surplus, the first surplus since Peter Costello was Treasurer, as evidence. But if there does turn out to be a surplus this financial year, and of course, we've still got a couple of months to go before we'll know definitively, let's be clear who's delivered the surplus. It would really belong to the Treasurer who brought down the budget for the financial year we're in, and that was actually Josh Frydenberg, not Jim Chalmers. Chalmers is simply the incumbent when the Frydenberg surplus comes to fruition. Indeed, he's the incumbent who's currently slated to deliver nothing but deficits for the next decade. What's more, had the future fund earnings of $5.3 billion this financial year not been included in the bottom line, as the budget rules now provide, there would actually have been a deficit of $1.1 billion. And had these earnings from the future fund been included in the past, let's go back to 2018, 2019, that financial year just before the pandemic, well, the Morrison government back then would have delivered a $7 billion surplus rather than the almost $700 million they did in deficit. So a little bit of tricky budget accounting and bingo, you get yourself a surplus. But even then, because the hard work hasn't been done, the surplus has gone in a flash. And as I said, it's deficits as far as the eye can see. Now, my assessment on the actual budget measures from Labor, here it is. The worst is, well, there's a few worse, a few pretty bad and pretty ordinary announcements, but the worst of them is the government's decision to increase unemployment benefits by $40 a fortnight, on top of the Morrison government's earlier decision to raise the dole by $50 a fortnight. With almost half a million jobs going begging across Australia, there hasn't been a better time for anyone to find work who's serious about it. Labor's budget was a budget for people who'd rather not work, like these, a couple on the ABC last week, complaining that they lacked the energy to work full time, but demanding more support from taxpayers. It's like, so my life and my daughter's needs and my family needs don't really matter. So what do I do? Do I do the right thing to not be a supposed dole dodger and work five days a week for the 850? Or do I work the hours I'm working and, and get that little bit of a top up? If there's one decision that best illustrates how Labor has changed from the party of the working classes to the party of the welfare classes, it's this. Making it easier for people to stay on welfare when there's no better time, as I said, in this country to find a job. And likewise, there's no clearer demonstration of the coalition's evolution as the party of workers than Peter Dutton's demand that any dole improvements are used to make it easier for people to keep more of what they earn, thus easing them from the dole into work. Now, you know this issue of welfare handouts is biting in the budget when you look at what's happened today in the news poll. The news poll shows that only a third of voters think last week's budget is good for the economy, meaning two thirds of them don't. A lot of voters think that the handouts will only add to inflation. And you also know the budget welfare talk is hurting when the government are out desperately today trying to reshape the language around their budget. So, so language that's less about handouts now and uh, less about the money going to people on welfare and more about helping middle Australia. Just listen to this. The budget is all about cost of living relief in middle Australia, in middle Australia, support middle Australia. Support for middle Australia was absolutely central to support people in middle Australia, substantial help for middle Australia. It was aimed squarely at middle Australia. Nothing says middle Australia like making it cheaper to see a doctor. Middle Australia, middle Australia, middle Australia, middle Australia. 
I've been around politics a long time. They have had a council of war meeting with the pollster over the weekend. You've got to see Middle Australia, boss. And there you go. And you'll hear that ad nauseum for the next few months. Perhaps, though, the most fundamental problem with last week's budget is that the somewhat improved fiscal outlook is based almost entirely on higher prices for our resources, the very coal and gas that Labor wants us to stop using. And Treasurer Chalmers gave the game away when he coyly referred to high prices for the things we sell overseas, refusing to even name the source of this bounty, lest it highlight our dilemma as a nation. How can we stay rich if we refuse to make the most of the resources that are the source of our modern prosperity? And what sense does it make anyway to stop using them here, but to sell them to our competitors like China for them to use to get richer and stronger? As Dutton's budget reply made clear, the coalition will go to the next election committed to ending the ban on nuclear power in this country. As the opposition leader declared last Thursday, how could any rational government put nuclear power at sea but refuse to use it on land, as it's the only current proven way to have emissions-free baseload power? If Dutton commits to exploring small modular reactors and to not closing down any more coal-fired power stations until there's a reliable alternative, and to rapidly increase new gas fields like Narrabri, like Beedaloo, like Browse, well, he'll have the makings of a strong and credible energy policy. Certainly a much better policy than that of the government that promised to cut your power bills by $275 per household per year, but is on track instead to double them.